Hello, it's Jane here and for the eagle-eyed amongst you, you might have realised by now that I'm not actually up at the allotment, I'm in my kitchen. And there's a very good reason for that because yesterday I was up at the allotment harvesting one of my favourite vegetables, the cavolo nero, cavolo nero, cavolo nero, cavolo nero, one of those. Um, and so today, I'm going to show you, I've brought it home and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with it. Okay. you'll be able to see from this little shot here just why we are so pleased with them this year and one of the main reasons that we've had such a good crop or that we're getting such a good crop is that they've been covered with Enviromesh because as you know with any member of the Brassica, fa Brassica family um, the butterflies particularly your lovely little cabbage whites will just make a beeline for them and make very short shrift or rather their caterpillars will of the leaves so the thing is, I want to try and get some of these leaves now before they get got by caterpillars or whitefly or anything, because even with the Enviromesh, um, there's a risk that they're going to get in. I mean, to be honest, I just found a snail on the inside of the Enviromesh. <laughs> so that sort of <laughs> shows you what we're up against. So I want to try and pick, and there's cabbage white. Oh, is it going to come into shot? There's two cabbage whites just out of shot there. Um, so I want to pick them while they're still beautiful. And then, as I say, I'll take you home and show you how I uh, prepare them for the winter. Okay. If you can have a look at this stem here, you can see the old tatty leaves at the bottom. I'm obviously not going to take those. You can see lovely new young fresh growth coming from the top. I'm not going to take those. I'm going to harvest on all of these stems from really the centre of the plant and I'll show you why. Clearly that isn't big enough for a meal for anybody really unless you're a little mouse or a cabbage white butterfly so what I'm going to do I'm going to like I say I'm going to leave these bigger ones at the bottom I'm leaving anything that's got damage like that why has that got damage that shouldn't be damaged and I'm going to pick from the middle there it should just snap and pull off and you can see there that is just a perfect size leaf um, if a look at the back, can you see this? Let me just check and see if you can see. Sorry if my arm's in the way of the screen. If you look at the back here, if that had got white fly damage, just checking it hasn't, there's absolutely nothing on there. It's absolutely clean. But once they get white fly on, not only do the white fly damage the leaves, but they lay and leave sticky little deposits on the back and try as you might to wash them off it's really not a nice task so that is the perfect sort of leaf that we're looking for that sort of size not too young not too tatty and what we can do then what that does oopsie is that will then can you see that that will then leave the plant to put all its goodness into the young leaves at the top. So that stem's gonna keep growing up. I mean, eventually we will take these bottom leaves off, but we don't need to do that today. Um, yep, yeah, these are lovely. Oh. Yeah, so these, the goodness of the plant now will start to go up into these leaves here. And if you imagine, if you've grown kale before, you know how tall it can get. And it, it's just such a beautiful structural plant. Um, so yes, it's not like that's the end of this plant. I mean, you could just pick the whole thing if you wanted to, but it's a sort of cut and come again thing, really. 
let's just check there's nothing on there yeah so I am just going to go around the plant I mean you can imagine look that's too small really I shouldn't have picked that one um but yeah you can imagine we've got a fair bit to pick but it's all good Well, I think I've got enough there. What I've got to do now is make sure I cover this over again, making sure I don't trap any of those pesky cabbage whites inside. It's getting quite stormy up there. One job. I mean, it's beautiful, isn't it? Let me show you. Two jars. <laughs> it's that David Bellamy moment. Look, aren't they wonderful? I mean, they are. They are. You can understand why they get called um, dinosaur kale. Not that a dinosaur, I never knew of a dinosaur that looked like this, but they look uh, prehistoric, the way the leaves are formed and everything. Absolutely beautiful. So what I did when I got home last night, I just put them in a jug of water. Now anything that I pick that's, <laughs> anything that I pick that's sort of leafy, so even like a lettuce or let me think of something else, any spinach or chard or anything like that. As soon as I get it home, I put it in water because you do find that it starts to go a bit limp. You don't want your lettuce limp. So um, yeah, they've been in jugs of water overnight. If you have another way of keeping your, your greens crisp, do let me know. I know some people just swear by putting them straight in the fridge or putting them in a plastic bag in the fridge. I don't know, but I've always found that this method works for me and also it's quite nice to be able to see them because they are decorative right cavolo nero what is it i'll tell you what it is it's kale as i'm sure you all know it's a oh it's gonna take my eye out it's a tuscan kale and it's actually the words cavolo nero you can tell i've been on google you can tell i've been on google mean black cabbage oh is that a <laughs> I'm just checking to see. Oh no, oh no, I might not use that one. Picked the wrong one there. It's black cabbage. Um, and that's it. And it's been used in Tuscany for years and it's just beautiful. It's one of the best things to have in some sort of uh, a Tuscan stew. And by that, I mean something like ribolletta. So it comes in at a time when you're harvesting. It's got a long harvesting season. When you're harvesting your carrots, your onions, your beans. Oh, get some if you've got gigantes, brilliant. Broad beans, uh, not necessarily broad beans, you could use them, bellotti beans, um, any of your pulses that you grow in a lovely, lovely hearty stew. Get some of this in it. It's absolutely packed full of vitamin C. And you can tell really by looking at it because it just looks healthy which is probably, it would probably put a lot of people off. Apparently more vitamin C than a spinach, but spinach has got other things in as well. But um, yeah, so it's a really dense, densely packed, nutrient rich veg. And you can do that with it if you want as well. So what we're we going to do today, Jane, I'll tell you what we're gonna do. Because as I say, this has got a long harvesting season, we shouldn't be too, badly off for getting it over the next few months, picking it over the next few months. But as I said earlier, even though it's got EnviroMesh on, you can bet your bottom dollar that some cabbage whites get in there. And if not the cabbage whites, the, the hugest fans of this type of kale are the um, white fly. And once the white fly are in, it really makes a mess of your crop. So I'm going to pick some, to, well, I've picked some today. I'm gonna to get this ready for freezing so that if the rest of the crop, or, you know, Lord forbid, any of it really went up the swanee, would have some left in the freezer. So that's what I'm gonna to do today. There we go. I've just turned the overhead light off because 
it had gone so dark we've just had such a heavy rainstorm that um yeah it, the light just completely went in here so i've turned that off because it's brightening up a bit but sod's law it'll probably go dark again in a minute but never mind you know i'm here one of the great things about a rainy day though is you don't feel guilty about not being in the garden i mean you can there's still jobs to do polytunnel greenhouse there's all sorts of stuff you could be doing but when it's absolutely hammering down like that you're better off staying indoors and preparing what you've got i mean I don't know about you but I'm a tinker for getting stuff half ready and then wandering off and leaving it or harvesting stuff bringing it home putting it in the fridge to be dealt with at a later date and then forgetting about it there's a whole bowl of gooseberries in the fridge that I picked about a week ago I don't know what sort of state they're in it gets to the stage where you don't want to look but I think they're probably past their best anyway what I'm going to do then with my delightful kale is all I'm going to do I've got a very sharp knife Ooh. and I'm, I'm left-handed so I look gammy handed but I'm going to remove the central rib and which is dead easy to do you just run your knife along the side of the rib you can eat the rib you can I'll tell you what to do with them in a minute but for this purpose I'm just going to remove it. I'm not going to remove all of it. I'm just going to remove the thick bit. So I've got a funny little wig. Um, and that's it. That's all you do. Fold it. Fold it as much as you want. Like that. It's going to be roughly chopped. I do have to watch my fingers, you know. If I was a proper chef, I'd love to be one of these people who can go... Chup, 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 chup. No. No. Accident emergency is stressed enough as it is without me turning up with my fingers and a little jam jar. So that's it. That is as much preparation as that gets. And I'm going to be quite honest with you. That has not been washed because it has not been sprayed. It has not had anything to untowards on it at the allotment. And you know, it's going to get boiled to death in a minute. Anyway, well, not boiled. I'm going to be blanching it in a minute. So anything bad will come out when it's being blanched. But I've got to say, you know, even the smell of it, it just smells healthy. Now, some people might say healthy is bad, but if you're low on iron, you know, if you suffer a little bit, you're not, well, a little bit from anemia, then this is your best friend. I mean, <laughs> that's quite sad, isn't it? Is that what I think? Is this what life's come to? This is my best friend. But yeah, as far as putting it in your food, you can make smoothies out of it. You could, if you pick the little young ones that I didn't, you can chop that up and use it in salads. Um, but like I say, my favourite way is like big winter stews. You know, you can make a pesto out of it apparently. But I never have. Want to try? That's what I like about um, this whole gardening community. Someone's bound to pop up with, have you tried this? Or have you tried that with it? Or have you made kale muffins? I don't know where I've got that from. But you know, there'll be someone who's done something unusual with kale. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and that's what's good. And that's how we learn. But like I say, what I've got now, there we are, I'm gonna do these together. I could take that out all the way to the top. But if I get those out, I can chop those all at once. And then I've got, I wouldn't say ribbons of kale. I might need a bigger knife actually. But you know, that's going to do me. So, I've only got two more jungles to go. But I'll come back to you when it's all done and show you what I'm going to do next. Well, there we go. I've clearly underestimated the amount of uh, Cafalo Nero that we had. So this is just one jug full. There's still another jug to go, but I've got two bowlfuls there. And this here is the stalks that I've chopped into ooh, two inch size pieces, little manageable size pieces. And I'll talk to you more about them in a moment. 
okay this is where the fun begins and I always get a little bit nervous at this point so I've got one of the bowls of kale here I keep calling it kale it's kale um, I've got a pan of boiling water in the back there um, I've got oh, I haven't got my cold water ready cold water oh it's a new tap which one's cold it's cold now ideally you would have some ice or something in your water but I haven't it's cold water the whole idea is that we are going to blanch the chopped leaves for a couple of minutes at the very very most whoopsie a couple of minutes at the very very most um, and then we want to stop that cooking as soon as possible so this is where I was getting panic and think ah oh, it's gonna be too much if I had a colander I had two colanders and I don't know where they've disappeared to um, but since we started decorating they seem to have moved I think they've made their way to the tip so I've got this fryer thing that we never use for anything else anyway um, as soon as they've been boiling for two minutes drain into that cold water uh, as quick as you can all that's going to do is stop the cooking process okay because you don't want them to be overcooked and you don't want to start going a bit slime or anything like that okay once they've cooled down a bit you can then drain again and lay them out to dry but let's get the first lot in i've actually turned the cooker off and you can't see me can you because i'm right on the far side but again it's a new cooker and let's see if we can get it to turn on right this has had are you going to stay on oh. this has had a lid on it if ever you're boiling anything put a lid on because uh, it'll just boil that much quicker because it's keeping all the the heat in so that ice should be boiled by now so <laughs> if I was organized I'd show you me actually putting it in right next to the oh, it's not boiled now. right next to the pan but I'm going to put it on full the other thing I've got ready um, and this is how I do it I've got a kettle that's just been boiled as well when I drain the hot water off the kale that has just been blanched I drain it straight into and I've just put some cold water in it by accident straight into another pan so that that is hot water you're using it again okay you'll have a bit less which is why you top it up with the kettle but then you're not pouring boiling water down the sink one go after another but I think if that is now if that has now come to a rolling boil yeah which it is trust me <laughs> me I'm a gardener um, I'm just clean hands I'm just gonna throw as much as I can into that pan and you can see oh you can see it's going well you can't see but I can see it just sort of collapses straight away I, mean, I suppose not so much like spinach because spinach just seems to disintegrate in front of you doesn't it sometimes you put in like a whole I don't know whole bag full and it comes down to about an egg cup but right okay that's enough for now I'm just gonna stir that in leave that for a couple of minutes and then put the lid back on so it comes to a nice quick boil and then just have a quick little word about blanching I know there'll be a lot of grannies out there sucking eggs because you'll all know how to do this um, but I also know there's an argument for not blanching and that argument is you know just chop things up put them in the freezer the only reason I blanch is because I want it, the goods to last for a long time and I do feel or rather I haven't yet been convinced that to chop raw and freeze straight away is going to last quite as long it's got something to do with enzymes I'm not sure what but you'll know what I mean um, so if I know that this way is going to make sure that my my produce is going to last longer I'm going to use it so yeah I know there'll be a lot of you out there saying no Jane don't bother don't bother there will be times when I don't bother I mean I don't bother with fruit I don't bother with the strawberries or the raspberries they just go they're going on a, a trail show you in a bit open freeze straight into bags so you don't blanch your strawberries so 
I'm talking myself out of blanching my kale now. But there we go, that's going on. That, actually, I think I'll get this done in two lots. But while that's doing, let me just tell you about the other bit of kale. Where can I put that? Put that on there. The, the kale stems, uh, really the reason that you take them off, the little ribs down the centre of the leaves, the reason you take them off is they, they, they're thicker, they're tougher, and they're going to have a slightly longer cooking time. So if you are blanching your leaves, like I am at the moment, um, your leaves will be blanched and your the stems won't be, or the stems will be, but your leaves will be overcooked. Okay, that's been about two minutes, hasn't it? Right, okay, here I go. Lid off. Ooh, you know what? Oh, can you see that? I'm going to see if you can see that. That is turned into such a rich, rich green. Right, I'm talking and I should be draining. Okay, pop that on there. Oh, this would be nice one. I just have a proper colander. Right, pull that straight into the other pan. Steam your glasses up. And as soon as that has drained, give it a good shake into the cold water. Jane. Okay, so now what I've got here. I'll show you. I've still got that on the heat. Shouldn't be too hot. I have got a pan of kale water that is probably still near boiling point that I can put back on and put the next lot in. And while this next lot's in, that lot's cooling down. So hopefully I will get this in a half. I've got this in in two bits, which I'm really, really pleased about. This is boiling. Well, this is boiling. Ah, oh, lid on. You see, this is where it's difficult to talk. For me, talking and doing at the same time is sometimes not advisable, especially near a hot stove. While I've got that in there, I can feel that that is now in that nice cold water. Can you see that? That is cooling down beautifully. I just give it a little massage through and I'll show you again. The richness of the green has just intensified so much. As if it wasn't green enough already. Look at that. You can see that. I hope you can see that. The whole kitchen's green at the minute. I've gone for a bit of a green look. So, right, while that's doing, da 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 da. I saw someone once going through this whole process with a great big outside, like, range barbecue over in the States somewhere and he had that many different pots of things going on. It was quite mind boggling. But yeah, so now that, that is going down the drain. If I was being really, really good, I would save that water uh, for anything really. Flushing the toilet, watering the plants. Should have done, didn't. But I did, I mean, I'm using the other, I'm reusing the other one twice. Right, okay. Need to get that as dry as possible. Need to get more cold water in there for the next lot. Multitasking Jane. <laughs> of course, you could use a salad spinner. That would get um, nice and dry quick, quickly. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to need that one in a minute. What I'm going to do is just lay it out onto some nice clean tea towels. And you can see how the volume has decreased already. I mean, look at that. That's such an amazing thing. Is that really worth it? It's like I sat and potted all my broad beans last night and I had, oh, a huge bag full to bring home. And then it took about an hour and a half podding them. Got one bowl full. I thought to myself in the end, you know, I could get that from Aldi or any other supermarket um, for probably 99 pence, but that's not the point. I have to keep telling myself that. Right, okay, that's drying. That's cold water. This should now be at a nice boil. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's done. I'm turning that off because I'm only going to do the two lots while I am talking to you. Where's my trivet? I've lost my trivet. This'll do.
Okay, let's pop that on there. And again, oh, I've put my cold water in there. I need my other pan. I am going to keep this water, the boiling water, because it's packed full of goodness. I don't know what I'm going to use it for. I suppose you could freeze it if you wanted to. Right, you can't see this. It's in the sink. Can you see that? That actually fits that pan quite nicely. Okay, drain, 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 drain. <laughs> Three duck glasses. Oh my goodness, where's everybody gone? Okay, just have to wait to um, demist for a second. Need little windscreen wipers. Put that back over there. Because that's all I'm going to do for now. Give it a shaky, shaky, shaky. Shaky Jake. And then back into the cold water. Well, actually, you know what? This little thing's perfect for putting bowls on. Ooh, never knew that before. I've had it for years. Um, it's not to say because we're, we're doing the we're in the middle of doing the kitchen, and that involves when you've had a kitchen. You, we've been here for twenty odd years. You end up with stuff at the back of the cupboards that haven't seen the light of the day since the last century. You know, so uh, it's been quite nice finding them again. Ah, oh, it's a nice job. Right, okay, nice and cool. Stopped cooking. That's it. Done. Done, 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 done. Give it a good sing a song. Count to ten. And then we're going to put it on here for a little dry out. And what I am going to do, just to help it on its way, because that's still quite wet. I think a salad spinner would have been a good idea, actually. I should have used that. Um, I'm just going to get another little towel. Because the thing is, you want to get as much water off as you possibly can. Um, because that water is just going to turn into ice crystals. So the drier we can get it, the better the texture will be. Let me see if I've got a clean towel. Here we go. Clean-ish, it will do. There must be a word for this. Splatting your kale. Comments below. Right, okay. Put that away, let's put those away. And then I'll take this back over to the table and show you what I'm going to do next. Right, okay, that's it. If you can see, that was that bowl that was, ooh, well, it was up to here before. But you think, I know that's gone down quite a lot, but in cooking, it, how do you call it, it shrinks. It shrinks anyway. So that won't shrink anymore now. If that's the size it's going to be in your cooking. All I'm going to do, I've got as much of the wet off as I can. I have got my lovely, lovely, I've had this tray for so many years and I refuse to throw it out. It's completely battered. It's completely wobbly, but it fits in the freezer, in the fast freeze bit. Make sure before you go to the trouble of lining your tray and putting all your stuff on it, that it actually fits in your freezer because there's nothing worse. It's like one year I went and bought um, a great big roasting tray because we're a big fan of roast vegetables. And uh, I bought a great big roasting tray and I thought I had all these ideas, oh, I could do all sorts on that, this, that and the other. Uh, got it home, realized it wouldn't actually fit in the oven. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, learn by that mistake. So yeah, make sure your tray fits in the oven. That's uh, fits in the freezer. That's the only tip I've got really, because otherwise all you have to do is that. You're lying that out. Why are you doing it this way and not just putting this straight into bags, which again, you can do. I find if you put stuff straight from blanching straight into a bag, um, it tends to stick together. And what you have then is when it comes to getting the stuff out the bag, when you want it conveniently, because you're in the middle of cooking something, you end up either having to bash it on the worktop, um, use some sort of implement, wooden, wooden rolling pin or whatever, to bash it. And here's a, here's a few choice words in order to get enough pieces to break off like you want them. But if you do it like this, they're just going to freeze nice and 
what we're nice and finely in nice little bits so that when they do come to freeze them they will break up again much much better so I think I'm gonna to have to treat myself to another one of these trays that'll have to last me for the next 50 years <laughs> because what I don't want to do is just put a great big pile on that oh god that looks so good though that is so so nutritious and a lot of people think nutritious means really boring and possibly tastes a bit horrible in fact I'm not going to put any more on that I'm going to leave that for a second lot but look at that and the bits of stem that are in there they are so so green Farrow and Ball have probably got a paint range called blanched kale <laughs> I've already used their toasted sage or whatever it is in the back room but yeah in fact I'm going to take some of them off so I'll do that in a second lot right they will now go in the fast freeze for about an hour again what not to do is put them in the freezer and then forget about them while they're open freezing because what you can risk there is freezer burn but really you know if I can do that and talk and try and put a video together at the same time I think most people can do it it's not too bad what do you think what do you do with the all kale so yeah I hope you've been able to get out in your garden this week it really is kicking into this really incredibly exciting time of the year and if you're not a gardener well you're not going to be watching this anyway but you know it's <laughs> sometimes you look back I was chatting to someone yesterday and he was saying to me you know it's worth it though isn't it it's worth it and I was saying yeah yeah and I was walking away with my broad beans and my kale and my potatoes and my cold I thought yeah yeah and then I thought yeah it only takes 11 months of the year <laughs> to get to this stage and then you have one month of whoa you know but even so we keep doing it you know and yeah yeah it is lovely so I will be enjoying this kale in the depths of winter and who knows sometime in January I might even come back with um, my own personal ribelletta another thing I always pronounce wrong ribelletta stew it's just a stew isn't it but uh, yeah we'll see if that gets used up in that okay that's it for now I'll be back soon <gasps> I've got another slightly odd thing I'm going to do, but I'm not going to tell you this time. Okay, time will tell. Okay, but otherwise, have a lovely week. Facebook links, Instagram links, they're all below. Um, like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't been before. Usually I'm up at the allotment and it's a lot prettier to look at. But uh, anyway, have a lovely week and I'll see you again soon.